Yes, my friends, that's now three wins on the bounce. And Pochettino stress, he wanted to make sure this team got three points before international break. And it's nice to know that this team remembers what it's like to win games of football because once we get back after international break, we have a very difficult fixture list on the horizon and we need this type of confidence in front of goal to help us get through what's set to be a very difficult month. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, Nini, where the hell is that stupid, obnoxious, arrogant celebration that we normally see from big wins? My friends, I can't force it. I can't force the energy. And the reason why I can't do that is that even though we've scored the most goals out of any game this season, like I would say this was a dominant result, but I didn't feel like it was necessarily a dominant performance. It, it was like a game that told multiple stories. In a way, I, I felt like we also went backwards from a footballing sense a little bit in the sense that we did struggle to create really anything of quality from open play. I could cynically say that Burnley kind of beat themselves against us today, hence why we were able to get back into the game. And if it wasn't for moments going against them, this could have been a different type of game, a different type of result. Or if we played against a stronger opposition, I don't think they are making the same mistakes that Burnley do today. So on one note, I'm very happy that we got this win any way we could because that is the most important thing but on the other hand we can't get too complacent because there's also more work we have to do because our Achilles heel is any team that plays our possession it's any team that will look to close down our passing options close down our passing angles and force us to play sideways 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 where as I stress against a better opposition I think things work against us. So my friends, I hope you guys are happy that we got the first three points. We scored four goals. Cole Palmer on the score sheet. Nico Jackson, Raheem Sterling kind of stealing the show today as well too. And you know what? It's nice that attacking players were the match winners in this game today. So hit that like button. Let's go over 4K likes for the four goals we scored today. And to start with the first thing, I want to show love to Raheem Sterling. Um, I think in terms of how we played as a team, our only real like dangerous moments we were making in that first half was whenever Cole Palmer was rotating with Conor Gallagher and found himself in like more central positions in behind Bernie's midfield lines. You know, he was making things happen when he was there or he made things happen with the switch balls. And for the second thing, every time he plays switch balls to Raheem Sterling, I feel like this is one of those games of Raheem Sterling's Premier League experience and quality really shone through because essentially he is the main reason, the only sole reason why we have won the game in this manner. Now, I think throughout the first half, we did quite well in trying to isolate Raheem Sterling 1v1 out wide on the left hand sides. And uh, Raheem Sterling definitely didn't let this game go to waste. He was committing to taking on two players at a time. You know, Barney tried to stop him cutting inside. Sterling still found ways to do so. Sterling was not afraid to attack the byline, going straight inside the box as well too, causing a lot of danger to, to Burnley. And I guess it's no surprise in that sense that it was Raheem Sterling that forced that crazy, spectacular own goal from Al Dekil. I don't know how he did that, but that will be the story of Burnley's season where it's self-inflicting injuries that kill their games time and time again. And that was the moment of fortune we needed because in that first half, my God, you know, after the first like five minutes, we looked so flat, we looked so sideways, we looked kind of boring as well too and very predictable. So we needed that bit of fortune that really helped us. And second half was a completely different game. And Raheem Sterling instantly, instant impact, brings us a penalty in a very similar move in which he was causing Barnley danger throughout the game. Attacks the spaces. He wins the penalty off of Vitinho. And I was surprised that he didn't take the pen. Instead, giving that to Cole Palmer, who showed great technique when it came to really fooling the goalkeeper in terms of where he was going to direct his penalty shot. Like the way he opened his body up, you assume that he was going to go for the you know, bottom left post. Instead, he was aiming and disguising that to go for the bottom right post. Great penalty and a big surprise that Palmer was on pen duties. Let's see if he continues to be on them throughout the season. But I think after that moment then on, you know, Raheem Sterling's two involvements bringing us and helping us take the lead in that game, it was no surprise that 
he finally and rightfully deservedly got a goal in this game. Now, again, it was great counter-pressing uh, to win that moment. I think Conor Gallagher assisted him as well too. Uh, Caicedo did really well to, to win that ball. Of course, the kick start that move to begin with. And Raheem Sterling, with the confidence he felt in this game, he wasn't going to square that ball across goal to find Nico Jackson. He didn't have to do that. Instead, he expertly and uses his experience to just, you know, take the shot with his left foot, bottom right corner, great goal and well deserved and even in the end he had another like pre-assist moment I mean I'm going to call this the pre-assist moment where he's found out wide on the left hand side again and it was his cross uh, across goal which finds uh, its way inside the books uh, to find Cole Palmer and then Cole Palmer then engineers that pass to find Nico Jackson and I have to say you know Nico Jackson there's a reason why I like this guy I'll discuss him later on but to go back to Sterling, I think Sterling was the star performer in this game today. He made a lot of things happen. And I think from a tactical perspective, I think one of our game plans was two things here. Number one, we wanted to close down Burnley's passing options ourselves by using our mid block. And throughout the game, Burnley were being wasteful when it came to playing out from the back. I mean, their keeper was awful at doing that in Telford today. And they were regularly losing the ball in midfield when it came to trying to find their midfield. So that worked. And the second thing was isolating Raheem Sterling to great effect. And Raheem Sterling showed why Mudrik, of course, didn't start this game today rightfully because he was the match winner. So that is great stuff for Raheem Sterling. But to move on to another guy that really impressed me, that would be Nico Jackson. Now, I don't really care that Nico didn't start the game. I think with how the game is right now, you have like your first half lineups and your second half lineups. Broja and Jackson equally, of course, played equal halves. But Nico Jackson today, you know, scoring in consecutive games, especially after he was the match winner against Brighton. He scored a key goal uh, as well too. I just love how he scored that goal. I mean, again, it wasn't a key goal, but the way he scored that goal, the little bus gets dragged back. And then to take the shot with his left foot, like there's a reason why I keep stressing this, but if we don't hastily and reactively sign a striker for the sake of it in January, because we think that if you just sign players in every window, that guarantees you to get results and success, it doesn't. If we don't do that, if we actually invest in what we have already, I think Nico Jackson would benefit so much from next season and, and future seasons forward if he has allowed this season to really acclimatize the league, the country, the Premier League and have those match minutes to really just like clock the Premier League because he does certain things strikers won't do. I mean, how many strikers have we seen over the years that would have that bit of composure, that bit of skill to be able to open up that shooting angle for themselves with a drag back? We've been fans for years. We've rarely seen strikers do things like that. Nico has that. We saw that little 360 skill to Dan spin from in earlier in the second half too. You know, he has a multifaceted threat and I thought it was a bit premature when he was getting a bit of like criticism for a few misses, which I understand. But we can't forget the overall impact and quality that Jackson was bringing to our team. I still stand by this, but if you give this guy the minutes to develop, you will pay the rewards in the future. And it's the same thing for Armando Broja. The fact that, you know, strikers are scoring in consecutive games makes me very happy because you rarely see this at this football club. And long may that continue. But my friends, to move on, I'm going to speak about a small little negative. And oh my God, it's getting a bit sick and tired of the non-stop backwards passes. Uh, you know, sideways silver, I'm going to call him. I don't know if it's silver just like taking the decisions to keep playing backwards. I'd say maybe one thing that may be frustrating me a little bit about Silver is that I'm noticing that he doesn't want to take fouls for the team. Uh, I feel for the goal we conceded against Burnley, I think Silver should have taken the foul for the team then, got that yellow card, taken his man out outside the box and prevented that high XG scoring opportunity for Burnley. Yes, Kukurea should have done better. I think his positioning was all over the place and he encouraged Oba to take the shot across goal. But I just felt like in that moment, you know, I think maybe even Kukurea expected that moment to be dealt with beforehand. Hence why the panic kicks in. And I've just noticed that maybe Silva is not taking these fouls when he could at times. I noticed it against Forrest. I think 
was it against West Ham too as well? I think there's been a few moments. So I want to see an improvement from Silva who feels a bit passive sometimes. And it makes you wonder when Badia Shiel returns, he could really offer us a new outlet out from the back if he did take Silva's position. Even though I'm happy that we've scored a lot of goals, I can't leave this feeling out of my head. And I f it still reminds me that a lot of work is still needed. And I think Pochettino needs to start finding maybe more aggressive ways for us to get back into games like this or to lead. Because I think if you're playing against an 18th team, 18th place league team, and you're kind of struggling like this a little bit too, it, it's not ideal. It's not great. And I just think this passive positional play where it encourages so many backwards passes, you know, silver sideways, Kukurea backwards pass, Cobble backwards pass. No one wants to take the initiative. No one wants to take on the man. No one wants to create space for themselves. It's just like that will come back to get you eventually because we won't profit from games like this time and time again. Yeah, so, you know, I appreciate that for this one-off game, but I'm not resting on my laurels. But that's negative out of the way. We still have a few more positives. And I think Caicedo, I think his resurgence now is there. Um, you know, I, he needed more time. He didn't have a preseason. He wasn't fully match for, uh, sharp. But I think now, I mean, he is having an impact in terms of how we play. And you're noticing it, not even in the tackles. But look at the distribution. Like, I know you guys remember that super, like, switchboard to find Mudrick near the end. But when Caicedo is, like, dropping deep to receive... He plays these great blindsided passes to like the fullbacks either sides. He's receiving under pressure and he's playing forwards. Like this guy has great like playmaking qualities to his game. And it's nice that he's having an impact in terms of his passing. And I think there's even more to come from Caicedo, which is the exciting thing. And this is why we did absolute madness to do what everything in our power to basically sign him to begin with and you know it's not every day that you know you're discussing Enzo being a bit quiet but I definitely think Caicedo was better than Enzo in this game today and I think Gallagher second half he definitely stepped up especially with his energy the counter pressing he got an assist today that was good to see and I think Cole Palmer as well too was a bright spark you know what I wish that we did more to try and get more goals I felt like the last 15-20 minutes was uh, we didn't really do much to force the agenda to score more. I do think goal difference this season could be a massive thing, especially with the quality of like our rivals around us. And I think in games like this, where you could really like destroy a team if you really forced it a bit more, you know, I would have maybe gone for the fifth goal against Burnley today. But regardless, my friends, it's a 4-1 win. You know what? We now go into international break, a happier team, a more motivated team, and normally that continues. So my friends, thank you for watching. Hit that like button. Let's get 4K likes. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys tomorrow for what we learned. Cool.